Now, I didn't think I would actually make a podcast for this, but I've decided that I think it would be helpful to derive the quadratic formula right here on this video. And just so you know, I have in the past, and I will continue to allow you to, if you can show me you know how to derive this on your test, on a separate piece of paper, then you will get uh, extra points. You will get bonus points. So remember, to derive this, we're really trying to solve this for x. And our goal will be to use the square root property, but we can't use the square root property until we complete the square. And we can see that if you're given any quadratic equation here, it doesn't matter what a is, what b is, what c is, what you have up here is the general form. So now, if we can just solve this for x using a, b, and c, then it doesn't matter what a, b, and c are, we'll have a formula that we can plug that in. So I'm going to complete the square, and I'll first start by subtracting over the c. So I'll have ax squared plus bx equal to the opposite of c. And now I'm going to divide both sides by a, because I need to get rid of the number in front of the x squared. So I'm going to have x squared plus b over ax equal to the opposite of c all over a. So now I have my two pieces, x squared plus b over x, and those are the two pieces that I need to use to complete the square. So I need my uh, d value that I'll add to both sides, and I get that by taking... Remember, let me rewrite that. D is going to be equal to our middle term, which in this case is B over A. And we're going to divide that by 2. And hopefully you can see that dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. And remember, for the D value, we need to square it. So the D value that we're going to be adding to both sides is going to be, well, this will be B over 2A squared. So that D value is going to be B squared all over or a squared. So that's what I need to add to both sides of this equation. So I'll have x squared plus b over ax plus b squared all over 4a squared. And remember, I need to do the same thing to this side. So I'll have the opposite of c a plus b squared all over 4a squared. On the left-hand side, that's going to factor. And it's going to factor into, well, before you square that term to get D, right here, before you square that, that's what we're going to put inside the binomial here. So my grouping will be X plus B over 2A squared. And on the left-hand side, I'm actually going to add these together. And what I'm going to do is I need this opposite of C over A to have a denominator of 4a squared. So I'm going to multiply that in order to change a into 4a squared. I'm going to have to multiply that by 4a over 4a. So that's what I'm going to do on this step. And when I do that, I will get minus 4ac plus b squared all over 4a squared. So on that step, I changed this value right here, opposite of c over a. I changed it to be, uh, I multiplied it by 4a over 4a. So I had a denominator of 4a squared. And then my numerator, you can see, is four, the opposite of 4ac, because this is a minus c times 4a. This is minus 4ac, and it'll have a denominator of 4a squared. So since it'll have the same denominator, I can add the numerator, opposite of 4ac, and add it to this numerator right here, which is b squared, and we can write it over the same denominator. All right, so now I'm going to rewrite this actually up top here. So we'll have x plus b over 2a squared equal to the opposite, and I'm actually going to write this as b squared minus 4ac. Maybe that's good to do in this step. Just rearrange it so the b squared is first. Now I can take the square root of both sides because I have the square root property. I have the square root property. I have a quantity squared on the left. I can take the square root of that. I will have x plus 
b over 2a. On the right hand side I'll have plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and down below I'll have the square root of 4a squared. And I'm writing it like that because I, I don't actually want to remember when you take the square root of let's see if I can get that in. There we go. When you take the square root of a ratio like this, you know, you have a numerator and denominator, you can break that apart into the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. That's going to help us because the numerator will stay the same. So I'm going to keep this side the same. Numerator will stay the same. And I'm going to keep that, I'm going to move that plus or minus to the top. So we'll have b squared minus 4ac. But down below, the square root of 4a squared is 2a. So now if I subtract a b over 2a from both sides, which I want to do because I want to get the x by itself, I'll have x equal 2. The opposite of b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That whole thing over 2a, those have the same denominator that I can combine to be the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all that's under the square root, all divided by 2a. This is the formula, the quadratic formula, and now for any quadratic equation, doesn't matter what it is, if it has an a, a b, and a c, which all quadratic equations will, I mean they might be zero, but they'll all be in that form, you can plug in your a, b, and c into this formula, and you will solve for x.